absent, so that leaves the the dynamic duo and me. So, I, so want you to sing out this morning as we sing, I go to the rock. again we thank you for all your many blessings we thank you for the goodness in life Lord and the goodness of life we thank you Lord for all the many things that you do for us that go unaccepted uh, unobserved things that sometimes Lord we get so busy with our schedule that we just don't take time to to think about you and to spend our time with you and I pray today Lord that you help us to, to be more focused on you in our daily walk we ask, Lord, that uh, you bless everyone that's come out today. And, and, Lord, we've got a lot of people that are out for either sickness or one thing or another. And just pray that you bless them all today. And uh, be with us as we celebrate you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to. We've got, um, we've got several things coming up and um, I, that I need to make announcements. We, we have a dinner. Where's Norma? Norma, you want to uh, just give us a real quick... All right. So y'all have all heard that. We're going to have a hot month Christmas dinner. First Sunday, December 6th. I think it's December 6th, isn't it? Yes. December 6th. It's the first Sunday in December. That's all. December 6th. And you can bring whatever you want, but there's going to be a, a sheet in the back, a sign-up sheet, and if you aren't sure what you want to bring, then um, Norma should have some, some thoughts on things that we do need. So 
Um, but plan on being here, bring your family, let's have a, a real you know, a good celebration. Um, also, excuse me, we've got um, the uh, mitten tree, mitten and hat and gloves. Uh, we're going to be putting that up here, so this year we're asking that uh, you bring in either uh, a, a set of mittens, pair of mittens, or a scarf or a hat, and uh, we're going to get those to kids that are underprivileged that we can help them out. So, All right, Brother Gary, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Put me on the podium again, so I just got <laughs> something to say that, remember Paris, remember the people there, you all heard about it. There's evil in this world you wouldn't believe. Amen. And Satan's got an army, and they're calling it ISIS right now, but right. Satan's got an army out there. So they say when the end times come, you know, he's going to get stronger and fight harder. So he's fighting hard right now. So just uh, make sure your house is in order and your heart's where it should be. Amen. Amen. Praise you the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of them that we have that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious. His righteousness endures forever. You are righteous and honorable for us. We will praise you forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious <coughs> and full of compassion. <coughs> we remember all the good things you do for us. Because of your love for us. He has given meat to them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. We are Amen. Alright, let's uh let's try another song here. I'm Lord God. help me but I heard you that. <laughs> All right, at the cross, at the cross. We're going to do verses 1, 2 and 4 this morning. So <clears throat> excuse me. Now you all know this so you can sing out and take over for us. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Congregation, go ahead and be seated. Young folks, you are dismissed at this time. For those of you not going to Children's Church, you can turn to the second letter of the Apostle Peter in your New Testament. <clears throat> really helps me appreciate the praise team when they're all here. Um, I, I love to sing, I just can't. And that's... Uh, <clears throat> That's unfortunate, but uh, I I really do appreciate music. There's just so much uh, so much ministry available in music, and uh, I I really do appreciate it that, that we've got people that are dedicated and uh, that are interested in helping. And I know we don't always uh, sing the songs that everyone is happy with, but. Um, that's hard to do. You, you, you know, you kind of find the middle of the road. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I really appreciate the the uh, team. So, all right. One day this last week, I fell under attack. I was minding my own business when suddenly, bam, out of the blue, for no apparent reason, I had an inappropriate thought pop into my mind. Now, I wasn't thinking about anything that I thought was sinful. I wasn't watching some racy show on TV. I wasn't reading something that I shouldn't have been reading. I didn't see something when I was out and about doing things. This thought, this inappropriate thought, just came out of the blue. Well, regardless of where it came from, it was there. And I had the responsibility of trying to get it out of my mind. Now, a funny thing about a thought that comes into your mind, and I guess it's not really funny thinking about it, but um, it is interesting that it happens this way. Um, when a thought comes into your mind without an invitation, without you purposely thinking about it, it's hard to get rid of. It just wants to linger and linger and linger. And the more I tried to push these this thought out, the more battle I had. And it seemed like after a little while, I was kind of like the proverbial little Dutch boy that uh, stuck his thumb in the dike and once he plugged one hole, another hole burst open. So he had to stick another digit in there and he had to keep going until finally he was out of digits to stick in the holes in the dikes. As I plugged one hole or one thought and pushed it out of my mind, Two more inappropriate thoughts came in. And very soon, I had a full-blown war in my mind. And I was angry. I didn't invite these thoughts into my mind, and I certainly didn't ask them to hang around. But there they were, taking up an important amount of space in my already limited, Gary, don't you say anything, uh, already limited, overcrowded mind. And I was angry with myself also for even having such thoughts in the first place, for allowing those things to come in. I mean, I'm a Christian, and not to mention the fact that I'm a pastor. So I have a responsibility not just to <clears throat> myself, but I have a responsibility first and foremost to the Lord to guard what I think about, what I say. I have a responsibility to my family not to think inappropriate things. I have a responsibility to my church. I have a responsibility. And that responsibility was compromised this past week. This is probably a good time. Let's go ahead and we'll pause with all that just uh, to go ahead and read our scripture this morning. Once again, we're in the second letter to <coughs> excuse me, the church from the Apostle Peter. <coughs> In his second letter to the believers that are spread out through Israel, through Asia Minor, and as far away as Rome, now, uh, just historically, Peter is in Rome at this time, and along with Paul, Peter is very near to his own death. Peter will be crucified um, 
uh, traditionally upside down within a year from the time of writing this letter. <clears throat> but Peter begins his greetings with a reminder in verse 1 that all followers of Jesus Christ have obtained or received the same faith. It's a, it's a consistent faith for all of us, and that is, according to Peter, a precious faith. And Peter <coughs> excuse me, told us where that faith came from. He received it from the righteousness of God and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 2, Peter's exhortation continues, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now notice, this isn't just your typical form letter. This is a, uh, a very specific letter. It's written to a group of people. That group of people is to the believers that are in that region. The letter begins with an important greeting. Who's doing the writing? The Apostle Peter. Who is he writing to? The people who have obtained this precious faith that he talks about. How did they obtain it? They obtained it by the righteousness of God and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, verse 2. Grace, what is grace? Undeserved mercy from God towards us. And peace. Now that's absolute peace. That isn't just a temporary peace like when there is a ceasefire in a, in a battle. This is a peace that passes, surpasses all other things. It's not just a peace from enemy attack, although that's included, but it's a complete peace, spiritual and physical. Um, and that peace is conditional. It's conditional on if God so chooses to bestow that upon us. It's available to us, but there are times in your life where although God has given you His peace, although He has given you His grace, they're not always apparent at this moment in your life. Now, with this introduction established, let's go ahead and, and read the rest of this, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 3 through 11. According as His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge add temperance, to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things are in you, Peter says, and abound, they overflow, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But now notice, but he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off, <coughs> excuse me, and has forgotten that he was purged of his own sins. Now I want you to notice something there because Peter isn't talking about the unsaved barbarians. He's talking about believers that have walked away from their faith for whatever reason, and now they don't have that production of all these good things Peter talked about in their life. Consequently, they lack these things, and because they lack these things, they are spiritually blind. They can't see afar off, and they have forgotten that they were once purged from their sins, from their old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's take just a moment and go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, this morning I pray that you will help us understand that our walk with you, Lord, is, is conditional. You have given us eternal life. That's true. But that eternal life is, is for us to live within every single day. And if we turn away from you, we allow inappropriate thoughts and words and deeds to come into our world, then that jeopardizes our eternal home with you. Help us to understand that, Lord, so that we won't be blind 
and that we won't miss the boat when it comes to being uh, rewarded after we've been purged from our old sins. In Jesus' name I ask these things. Amen. Well, as I struggled with these inappropriate thoughts, they've now multiplied, and it's no longer one little thought, it's a group of thoughts, and I was disappointed in myself for letting these things slip in, and once there, to occupy my time for any length of time. So, as I tried to push one thought out, another quickly took its place, and I had to turn my attention to the new inappropriate thought, and I was becoming more and more frustrated. <clears throat> Not so much because of the attack. I mean, Satan has been attacking me for 65 years now. And he's gotten good at it. He actually started before I was born, I think, so he could get a jump start on attacking me. But what was so frustrating, or what is so frustrating <clears throat> to me, is that at this point in my Christian walk, I still have to fight these battles. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to just never have an inappropriate thought, or better yet, call it what it is, a sinful thought, come into your mind at all? And then I remembered <clears throat> the struggle that the Apostle Paul had, and as he wrote in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, Paul said in verse 15, For that which I do, I understand not. That is, I don't know why I do these things. For that which I want to do, I don't do. But that which I hate, that's what I do. Have you ever had that kind of struggle in your life? You know that you should say, think, or do something specifically, and you should be doing those things for God, yet you're not doing it. <clears throat> There's other things that are, that are taking place. Instead of doing the stuff that you should be doing, you end up doing stuff that's inappropriate or not beneficial to being a Christian and, and what a Christian should say, think, or do. So that's where I was at last week. I don't like being controlled by Satan. <clears throat> I hate it, as a matter of fact. I don't like being spiritually weak, not even for just a moment. But as I read the words of the Apostle Paul, and I understand what Peter had to say here, I'm not alone in my struggle. <clears throat> There's actually someone else out there that struggles with inappropriate thoughts from time to time in their mind also. Now, I know this is all alien for you folks, <clears throat> but for some of us, from time to time, very often, without warning, and seemingly without reason, bam, here they come. Do you think that some folks have maybe certain thoughts drop by unintended and that the folks are, are so busy and so preoccupied with other things in their life um, that they, they don't even pay any attention to the inappropriate thoughts? And we're talking about Christian people here. I mean, a Christian would never intentionally entertain some inappropriate sinful thought, right? I mean, Christians don't do that. So I wonder, if this is true, why are there so many scriptures found throughout God's Word that deal with believers allowing sinful thoughts to reside in their minds? I mean, there's got to be a reason for it, right? God, God had it in His Word for a purpose. Verse 3, according as, or better here, because God has given His divine power to us in order to enable us to live spirit, spiritually successful in all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and virtue. You see here, because the Lord has provided us with everything we need to be spiritually successful in the here and now, we should not falter in our Christian walk. So here's where my frustration comes in. I have been provided with peace and grace by God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what the Word says. That comes from the knowledge of knowing, or the, of the knowledge of God. And Jesus, given to me as a Christian, verse 2. So according to His divine power, I receive that, verse 3 that I should have all things given to me that pertain to life 
and godliness. Now, we know enough about sin to know that those two qualities don't apply to sin. Life and godliness don't apply to sin. Because sin doesn't bring life. What's it bring? Death. It doesn't bring godliness. It brings sinfulness. So those two things are anti to sin in my life. These things, the life and, and goodness, godliness, comes from knowledge of Him who called us to glory and virtue. Okay, I get that. I understand that. Because I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I now have the knowledge of who He is and what He's done for me and what He's given to me. Verse 4, according to what Peter said, whereby, or because of these things, we are given exceedingly great and precious promises, as mentioned above. So that you, we, might be partakers in the divine nature that is in Christ. Okay. So, because, that is because of the last part of verse 4 here, notice that, we have escaped, escaped corruption that is in the world through or because of lust. So as a Christian, what, what all that says is that you have been given an exceedingly great promise to be a partaker, and, and we talk about that on Wednesday night in our class, partaker means someone that takes part in something, doesn't it? So if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, then you are a partaker in His kingdom if you avoid all these pitfalls that come along through lust. Okay, now here's where it gets difficult for me. Because of God's peace, mercy, and grace, He has given me the knowledge to share in the exceedingly great and precious promises of Christ. Excuse me, that doesn't, that's not difficult for me. But these things include peace and grace, according to Peter, and because I've been given these wonderful things, then I have escaped or avoided the corruption that is in the world because of lust. Why then, if that's true, which we assume it is, why then do I sometimes struggle with thoughts and ideas that are alien to a life being lived for Christ? That's a dilemma. It's frustrating to know that I'm the only Christian in the world who struggles this way. <laughs> so as I was fighting with these thoughts this past week, a few things came to mind that were good things, and I, I was able to kind of reflect on those, and I'm just going to kind of, um, kind of toss these out here this morning to you, because I think that they're relevant to uh, this, this battle that we have. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing that came to mind is that the very idea that I would recognize an inappropriate thought coming into my mind is a type of victory in, it, in itself. I mean, if we can understand that what, what I'm thinking about right now is not what God would have me think about, then I've got a victory right there. Amen. I'm on the right track. Amen? Amen. Alright. So that is for me to understand what is normal for me these days is that my mind should be dominated by virtue and godliness, which means that I'm not, I'm not living in that life that I once lived in. And that's important. I'm not yet where I need to be. I've not arrived there yet. But I am on my way. God is working with me you remember the, the old song, He's not finished with me yet? Well, He's not finished with me yet. He's still working on me. So I'm not where I want to be or where I'm going to be, but I'm not where I once was. That's important for a Christian to understand as we progress along the walk that leads to virtue and godliness with God. And let me say it a little bit differently and stay with me here for just a second. The sinner I am today is not the sinner I once was. I'm a Christian now. I'm a child of God by nature, my new nature. I am not a practicing sinner. 
Do I still stumble from time to time in my walk? You know the answer to that. Yes, we're still going to stumble from time to time. When I, but, but it's not like it was in years gone by. Um, in years gone by, <clears throat> the inappropriate thoughts would occupy more of our, our time and our space in our minds than virtue and godliness. So we should be seeing a transition. Another thing, when I have an inappropriate thought come into my mind, it bothers me because I've let the Lord down. I've let the Lord down. Also, when I have an inappropriate or sinful thought come into my mind, my new nature automatically goes on the attack. That's a good sign. Stop the invasion. Counterattack immediately. <clears throat> Go on the offensive. Satan, get thee behind me, for it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy, saith the Lord. That's the attack, the counterattack. In my B.C. days, my before Christ days, and even for a long time after, I allowed inappropriate thoughts to linger in my mind. I mean, after all, you've heard it said, it doesn't hurt to look, it doesn't hurt to think about something. Well, it does hurt. And it's not right, it's not good for a Christian. Most of us don't need any help in conjuring up things to think about. So, when we allow something to come into our mind that shouldn't ought to be there, um, another thing I've noticed I want, to, I want to pick something up that I'm not going to damage anything with. When I let something this big come into my mind, it doesn't stay this big. Did you know that? It grows and it grows and it becomes this big before too long and it continues to grow and grow until it becomes this big. The longer I allow it to stay in my mind, the bigger it grows. See, sin doesn't dissolve. If you let sin into your life, sin doesn't just dry up and blow away in the next wind. It's not, it's not like a, 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 a cutting yourself and getting a little scab and, and, and each day it gets a little better and a little better and a little better and then finally it just falls off and you're done with it. Sin doesn't work that way, does it? Sin continues to inf in, uh, infest and get worse and worse and it begins to grow and grow and grow. We need to stop the sin in its tracks. How do we do that? First thing, quote Scripture. Remember D.L. Moody said, this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. That's true. Quote Scripture. Read your Bible. Pray immediately to God for His help. Don't go it alone. I can guarantee you something this morning. You cannot beat sin on your own. None of us can. We need God's help. How do I know that for a fact? Because if we could beat sin on our own, we would have done it. And we wouldn't need Jesus. You can't beat sin on your own. You need God's help. You need to stop the sin in its tracks. <clears throat> Second, we need to repent of the sin. And that's what I said. Even sin in our minds, we need to repent of it. Repent of thinking about sin before that sin becomes reality. Now, some sin is, is so rapid fire that all we can do is repent and ask God's forgiveness because it takes place before we can do anything about it. Anger is one such sin. We can let anger go from anger to hatred right now and we don't have time to do anything about it. Amen. So all we can do is repent and ask God to forgive us and then move away from that sin immediately. Also, we need to keep in mind that sin is all around us. So we must constantly be on guard. Sin is everywhere you are and everywhere you're going. Sin is not your friend. Sin will take you down. And the more people it can take with you, the better it likes it. Sin has a purpose in your life. To destroy you. That's what sin wants to do. And again, it doesn't stay small. It continues to grow and grow and grow. 
Sin never, ever, ever delivers what it promises. It offers pleasure, but it brings pain and suffering. It offers fun for a season, but that season soon ends and you are left wanting. Sin, another thing, sin is always more expensive than you anticipated. Always. Allowing sin to linger in our minds results in waste. Wasted time, wasted lives, waste. So, with all that in mind, what's the antidote? Notice in verse 4. This is the antidote beginning here for inappropriate thoughts that come into our mind. You have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, so now, verse 5, act on the grace God has given you. <clears throat> Give all diligence. You know what diligence means, don't you? Wide-eyed, just looking around. Be alert. Be watching. <clears throat> Give all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue add knowledge. To knowledge, temperance, and that's self-control. That's an area where many people uh, fall into sin because of that area. They don't have self-control. Patience. And that patience is especially with other people because they're the ones that usually cause us to sin. <laughs> you gotta have you gotta have patience with other people. And godliness, verse seven. Brotherly love and kindness. Verse eight. If these things are in you, you will not be barren, you'll not be unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So notice still one more thing in verse eight. If these things abound, that is, they're multiplying in your life, you will be victorious. Folks, every single one of us, from time to time, is attacked with inappropriate thoughts. Every single one of us. These things, however, do not define us as Christians. If a stray cat comes to your yard, you have one of two choices with that cat. Well, actually, there's more, but two that I'm going to mention. Um, the first thing is you can chase it out of your yard, and it'll run away. The second thing is you can feed that cat. And then guess what? You never get rid of it. <laughs> the choice is ours what we allow to dwell in our minds. Thoughts will come from time to time. But we have the power to push them right back out. The more Jesus is in our lives, the less room for Satan to operate we will have. He will attack you. Satan is going to attack you. Especially if you give him an invitation by opening the door of your mind. See again, um, <clears throat> one of the areas that, that people really... Um, falter in is the things we watch on TV, and another area are the things that we read. Those things affect us, and they open the door for Satan to attack us. Because you can have a memory that's failing, and you can forget more than you remember, and I'll guarantee that Satan will help you remember that dirty joke you heard someone tell last week. Satan will attack you, especially if you give him the opening, or if you invite him in. So don't allow him to be comfortable. Fight. Get him away. Ask the Lord for help. And when you do, the Lord will stand with you. Pray and ask Him to fight with you and to fight for you. Lastly, fill up your mind with the things of God. Paul said, allow pure thoughts to come. These things that are pure, think on them, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We have control, for the most part, of our minds. What comes into your mind, you do have control over. And you might not, you might not think that, but the longer you allow something to dwell in your mind, the more it controls you. The more it begins to influence other areas of your life. And pretty soon, it can take control to the point where, where you don't have much say in the matter. One of the, um, one of the things that um, 
with the with the internet and all the pornography on the internet um, that has opened the door for for many many people to become hooked on that junk and um, and unfortunately um, it's it's like uh, any other kind of drug um, once you begin to take it um, it doesn't take too long before you build up a tolerance and, and what do you need when you get a tolerance you need more of the drug and pretty soon you find yourself needing more and more and more and more and, and that's how all sin works in our lives. The more we allow it into our lives, sin is a drug. Sin makes you feel good for a while. But its end is destruction and death. It takes more from you than it gives. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for this congregation. Lord, I pray that we'll take this to heart, Lord, that you'll help us to understand that... that we have control over inappropriate thoughts, sinful thoughts that come into our minds. And we have a responsibility along with that um, ability to do something about it, to not allow them to dwell in our minds. I pray today, Lord, that you'll help each and every one of us here to recognize that, that, that we do have that uh, ability, that we can control what comes into our mind and we can also force those things out that, that would interfere with our walk with you. This thing I say with confidence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Would you stand with us this morning? We're going to um, lead you in a song invitation. It's not going to be on the overhead. This, uh, it's a song that you know. But as we <coughs> excuse me, lead you in this song, um, consider your relationship with the Lord. Consider where you're at as far as the kind of thoughts that you allow to come into your mind. Is this a day that... <coughs> You need to either come forward and ask God to forgive you for things that you allow in, or maybe there in your chair or seat, you just need to ask God to give you strength to be over, able to overcome those things.
Well, hopefully we'll have our band back next week. So I remember we've got a lot going on, a lot coming up this uh, <clears throat> over the next few weeks. We're just uh, a week and a half away from Thanksgiving and just uh, a handful of weeks away from Christmas. It just uh, when you're only here one day, one day a week, things things progress pretty quick. So, uh, Randy, would you dismiss us this morning, please? Thank you, dear Father.